It's one of the most successful franchises in video game history. Its lore is as rich and varied as standbys as Mario or Link or Samus. It is the story of Halo. And this is the fifth and final Halo game done by publisher Bungie. Contact with Visegrad Relay was lost last night. Hey there everybody, this is Ray Carcillo for Classic Game Room, and of course I am talking about Halo Reach. Now it's interesting because the final chapter done by Bungie is also really the first chapter. Now although of course Halo Wars, which was done by Ensemble, takes place 20 years before, this is the real story of how Halo came to be. This is about Reach, and this is about how Master Chief ends up getting into his possession the knowledge of Halo. But this all starts with a group of guys known as Noble Team. Well, guys and girls. Can't forget about Kat. She seems like the type that might hurt me if I forgot, I forgot about her. And the story is, is that basically the Spartans were returning to Reach for an upgrade, and basically for the Spartan 2 program, which is what Master Chief is. And when they get to Reach, well, let's just say there's an unfriendly force of purple people eaters waiting there for them. Reach, of course, had the humans' most advanced military research and development facilities and was critical to the series because everyone familiar with the Halo canon already knows the ending and this is simply a telling of the details of that story. Basically, folks, Reach must fall. Now, as this sets up the events for the original trilogy, of course, they, nobody knows what the Halo is quite yet and Master Chief doesn't exist. It's only Noble Team. You play as Noble Six, the newest member to Noble Team, a highly decorated group of Spartans that consist of Carter, your commanding officer, Cat, the tech specialist, Jorge, or, or George as he's referred to into the game, but it's spelled like Jorge, uh, the machine gunner, June, the sniper, and Emil, the personality challenge shotgunning warrant officer. You can kind of tell he's a bit of a badass by the skull painted on his helmet. And basically, when you get to reach, your job is to support the military, the UNSC, as much as possible as you're sent around the planet from location to location, from the Arctic area to the desert area to the lush jungles all over the planet Reach as you try to quell and hold back the forces of the Covenant and allow the people of Reach to escape and hopefully the knowledge of the Spartan 2 program as well. The focus for this game was the variety of gameplay experiences and you'll notice this very quickly uh, from the very beginning something very different to Halo is that you get to play as part of a unit and you feel less like a, a hero or a superhero like you did when you, when you were Master Chief and more like a marine, more like part of a unit. You're getting orders barked at you by Cat or Carter. You're moving as a unit, usually teamed up with Jorge, clearing rooms. And you feel more like a marine than a Spartan, really. More like the ODST characters. But even the ODST characters from Halo 3, even though you were working as a unit and together, you never had these guys side by side. You spent most of the game searching for them. One of the unique aspects of, of Halo Reach is you're constantly fighting in a unit. And not just with co-op, either. Which my friend Kevin, of course, was able to help me out with, um, as you'll see here. But, I mean, aside from this, there's also space levels, there's fighters, you, you fly a scarab, you fly in a falcon, you get to drive a scorpion tank, which of course was also, you know, a very, one of the most fun levels of ODST, so I was happy to see that happen again. And the space levels remind you mostly, like, a lot of N64's old Rogue Squadron games. Uh, maybe in the future, when 343 Industries takes over this for Bungie, you can hopefully see maybe a Rogue Squ squadron style S game for the Halo series. Could you imagine if they developed a Halo game that was set completely in space? I mean, I can now. And it's a shame it's only two levels that, that you get to fly in. But again, the focus of this game was to give you as many different experiences while encompassing you in an entirely new experience, and that's the, fa the focus of Halo Reach. And I think they did a really great job in doing that. Uh, I mean, as, you'll, as you'll see, the game is gorgeous, and it highlights the various gameplay experiences from the deserts to forests urban areas to the space corvette that you have to invade in the sixth mission uh, the game will run the gauntlet of breathtaking locales for you to fight your way through and really pushes the xbox 360 graphically to the extreme 
I mean, from the very beginning when the menu screen comes up, you realize this isn't your typical Halo game in terms of looks. On top of the great looks, rounding out the tremendous peripherals, the audio is fantastic. Top notch, great voice acting from all those involved, another heart pounding original score, and tremendous sound effects as is a staple of the Halo series. <laughs> Another fresh part of the game is that since this is an R&D facility, for the most part that you're working around, there are new weapons to the game for you to discover that may never have made it off a of reach for widespread marine use, which is why you don't see them in the original Halo trilogy. From various sniper rifles to a marker that calls for glorious orbital strikes as you blow up